Today we're going to be doing an in-depth analysis of stat IVs in PAL world. There's going to be a ton of information to cover, and you'll be able to use this information to find out which of your PALs are the most powerful and have the most potential, how to transfer those IVs to other PALs, and everything you could possibly need to know. Now I have personally been doing a ton of testing around all of these stats over the last week, but once again I was beaten to the punch by the amazing Blah Abel. Still not sure if that's how I pronounce his name, but this absolutely brilliant human figured out all the math behind exactly how all of these stat IVs IVs work in conjunction with all of the data mining information that we have. Now there is a lot of math involved in this, but I'm going to be breaking it down Barney style once again for all of us. So that way we can do this without losing our mind. We'll also be using a website to assist with this and I'll leave a link in the description below. But thank you once again to Blah Able and the entire Pal World community for all the effort you have been putting into figuring out all of this stuff. And hopefully this video helps the rest of us be able to make the best pals in the game. Now for those of you unfamiliar with the term IVs, let's do a quick explanation. Let's take these two Blazemuts, for instance. They are both level 45, but you'll notice the stats differ quite a bit between the two. Now we do have to ignore their passive skills. The only passive skill we have on one of these that does change their stats is Hard Skin, which increases their defense by 10%, but we need to look at their base stats. So we have a base stat of 582 for the attack, and then a base defense of 487. Now this one is level 45, and then this other level 45 has a base attack of 553, and a base defense of 541. We also have drastically different HP. This level 45 has 3,292, whereas the other one has 3,035. So even though this level 45 Blazimut has hard skin for a 10% increase to defense, it actually has a less defense than this other one. And that's due to the fact that this Blazimut has more individual values and defense than the one that even has the 10% increase from hard skin. So these individual values can be incredibly important because the difference in stats can be huge as you get to level 50. Now I figured the best way to go about showing this off is as visually as possible rather than doing a deep dive into all the numbers. We are using a website called palpedia.net. I will leave a link to this website in the description below, as well as a link to Blah Able's original Reddit post going over in detail all of the numbers behind everything you're going to see in this video. But I wanna make this as easily digestible as possible, so let's go ahead and get started. Now we're gonna be using a Fox Barks as an example for this. Now my Fox Barks is level 50, so on the level I'm going to type in level 50. And we can see if we had no IVs at all or no IV pre percent that these are the stats that we should have on our fox sparks. We would have 2,125 attack. Our current fox sparks has 2,696. Our attack would be a measly 381. We're sitting at 460 at the moment. And our defense would be at 312, and we currently have 385. Now we do have Pyromaniac on here, which increases fire attack damage, but that has no effect on our base attack stat. Now the IVs are based on a bonus percent range for this website. For HP, it's 0 to 50%. For attack and defense, it's 0 to 30%. Now IVs are individual values that determine the maximum potential of a PAL stat. Internally, all stat IVs are between 0 and 100. However, the bonus they offer is different for attack and defense versus HP. Now this website has chosen to use the bonus percent range as the conversion for both HP attack and defense. Now the HP IV is not accurate at the moment 100% because some species have slightly different ranges and that mostly has to do with the alpha pals like this Frostallion having 19,526 health whereas a regular Frostallion would have around four to 5,000. But for this video we're going to be focusing on Fox Sparks and handing these IVs down to other pals. So what we need to do right now is figure out what our IV percent is. We know what our current HP on this Fox Sparks is. It's 2,696. So we can start increasing this IV percent until we get to the HP that we have on our Fox Barks. Now, right now we have an IV percent of between 35% and 36%. The way the game works is it rounds the numbers twice. So there's no perfect way to be able to find out what your exact IV percent is, but I'm gonna put it at 35%. Now we have a very high IV attack on here at 28%. So we've matched it at 460. And then our defense IV is also really high, which is why I'm gonna be using this Fox Arcs to be able to breed. Our defense IV percent is between 27 and 28. I'm going to leave it at 28% because it is the closest to the number that we show in the game. Now this is a really amazing Fox Barks. It has 35% out of 50% possible HP. Not great there, but the attack and defense are 28% out of 30, which is really good. Now the higher level your pal is, the easier it's going to be able to see what IV percentages you're sitting at. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. Now I have been working on breeding my high IV Fox Barks with another random Fox Barks with low IVs to show how these IVs can transfer down to the pals 
that they hatch. Now this also works for crossbreeding, and that's where the real power of this knowledge is going to come in handy. Now all of these fox barks are level 1, and we hatch 3 fox barks with different inherited values. We can see this right off the bat because we have 107 attack and 55 defense, then we have 106 attack and 56 defense, and we have 107 and 56. So these two right here are actually the best. We both got 107 and 56. So what we're hoping here is that we've actually fully transferred the IVs from the high IV pal onto some babies. Now this is where it's kind of difficult at a lower level to be able to tell what the IVs actually are. If we reset this and go back to a level 1 fox barks, you can see we have a base HP potential of 532. And if we start increasing this, the HP doesn't increase very quickly. So we can keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. And eventually we're going to hit the 543 HP, which we have on our fox barks. But you can see how the range will be there for a few clicks. So the range is between right now 33% and 35%. We don't know exactly where it is because we only have one level into this. And we can do the same thing for the attack IV. We can click this a ton until we get to the 107. So here we go. There we go. We are now at the 107 IV. And it's between 25% and 28%, 29%, 30 So it could any, be anywhere between 25% and 30% IVs. So with level 1 pals, it is really hard to see exactly what the IV percentages are. So what we need to do is just get a few levels into these. So I'm going to take them out, level them up. Level 5 is the minimum that I recommend before really checking the IV percentages. But the more levels you can get into them, the more accurate the website is going to be at telling you where your IV percentages are. Now, the easiest way to level up your pals quick is just take down a boss. Your pals are going to catch up to your current level very quickly doing this. So it's one of the best ways to level up your pals to check their IVs. We got these two Fox Barks to level 25, and you'll notice their stats are slightly different. The top one has 1,598 health. The bottom has 1,544. The top has 280 attack, whereas the bottom has 275, and they both have 206 defense, which means the top Fox Bark inherits inherited more of the IVs from our high IV pal than the bottom one. And the way this works is when you hatch a pal from breeding two pals together, the baby will inherit a range within the IVs of the parents. Now you can get the maximum range from the highest IV pal, and you can get that on one of the babies, or you can get a range in between the two pals. So say we have 20% IV on one and 30% on the other we can inherit a range within those two numbers. Now checking out the IV calculator of this Fox Barks, we can see we got the high health from the parent, the high attack from the parent, but we still have a low defense. So we haven't inherited the high defense IV from the good Fox Bark yet. So what I ended up doing was taking the babies that I got from the high IV Fox Barks, and I took the best ones that were a male and female, and I started breeding those together as well. After a little bit of time, I hatched this female fox bark. I got it to level 15. It has 152 defense, which is a 30% defense IV, 209 attack, which is a 30% attack IV, and 1,169 HP, which is somewhere between a 37 and a 38% IV. Now you'll notice that I was able to increase the IV percentages this way, which is actually really interesting. So what I've learned from all of my testing and from reading everybody else's testing is the IVs can be handed down from parents with a relatively high chance, potentially exceeding 50%. It seems to be rather difficult to hand down all of the best IVs from a single pal onto a baby, but it is possible. And even if you have two perfect pals with the exact same IVs, you can still get slightly lower or even somehow slightly higher. Now this also works with crossbreeding, which we're about to do. And the calculators are not 100% accurate either. They give you an extremely close approximation of the potential for your pal, but they could be a little bit on the low end or a little bit on the high end, but it is very, very close. And it's a great tool to have. Now I have a goal in mind of breeding a perfect shadow beak with the legend skill on it. So we're working on breeding the high IV fox bark with a menace thing that has legend and muscle head on it. So we gotta see if we can transfer all of the good IVs from the fox bark onto this baby kitsune that we should be hatching. This is where things can get pretty insane, and you might experience a lot of burnout trying to do this perfectly. Because now not only are we trying to transfer perfect IVs, but we're also trying to transfer passive skills. This is not going to be for the faint of heart, but there are definitely things that you can do to make the process easier. Now we just crossbred for one of these kitsune, I got it to level 25 to check the IVs. And we were able to get 289 base defense, and 376 base attack power, and 2032 health. Now the great part of this is, when we put it into the calculator, we can see that we have a 28% defense IV, a 28% attack IV, and a 23% HP IV. So we're able to transfer two of the three 
main IV stats, and we even got Legend on here. So transferring a few of the IVs is actually incredibly easy when crossbreeding, and when coupled with transferring passive skills this way, you can set yourself up for success really easily. Just don't stress too much about making one perfect pal. It's about getting two perfect pals you can breed together to create one eventual perfect pal. I know the way that I said that didn't make a lot of sense, but it will in a second. Now, as I say that I just had some crazy luck, I've only hatched four eggs from this set so far, and I got Musclehead and Legend, which was exactly what I was looking for, but it also has high attack and high defense IVs and a decent HP IV as well. But I also got another Kitsune with none of the passive skills that I wanted, but a significantly higher health IV, a magnificent attack IV, and the same defense. So here I could just keep breeding those pairs together and slowly losing my mind and descending into madness while trying to get all of those perfect IVs and passive skills all at the same time on one. Or I could take these two pals if they were male and female and just decide to start breeding these together at the same time. Now since their IVs, now since their IVs are actually really close, there's going to be a high chance that I get really good IVs while also passing the passive skills down at the same time. So it's a really a combination of breeding multiple things at the same time and trying to combine different pals in various ways and just slowly but surely upgrading the pals that you're using for breeding as you go through this process and it'll make it a lot easier than just bashing your head against the wall. Also, I don't know why my menace thing is stuck in the ceiling. Now before we get even a little bit deeper into this, it does seem like Alpha and Lucky pals do have a benefit that we weren't really 100% sure of before. And that benefit is they seem to have one perfect IV or at least one very high IV stat. So if you do catch a lucky pal, you can not only transfer the lucky stat, but potentially one really good IV from it as well. If you have been catching luckies or alphas, I do recommend checking out their actual IVs because you may have some hidden things in there that could be really beneficial for breeding or crossbreeding. Now take our lucky Chicopee for instance, we have a 33% IV in health, a 24% IV in attack, and a 30% IV in defense. Now my lucky Univolt on the other hand has a 33% IV for health, a 27% IV in attack, and a 27% IV in defense. Now the higher IVs definitely seems to be more prevalent on the luckies than it does for alphas. And I think that's because they are more rare in the game than alphas are. So when it comes to actually hunting for IVs, catching any lucky in the game that you can use for crossbreeding could be a very beneficial way of getting high IVs. Now you might be wondering, is all of this effort really worth it? When PvP comes around, it definitely will be. But you can also use this website to see exactly what the full potential is. Now we have my currently strongest Shadow Beak at level 50. I don't have any good passive skills on here. You can already see the difference here. My Shadow Beak has 667 attack. The max would be 685. I have 707 defense. The max could be 732. And I have 4,164 health, whereas the max would be 5,000. Now the real major difference is going to come in once you actually start fully upgrading, using the Statue of Power, and stacking your passive skills. With a theoretical maxed out Shadow Beak, we'd have 7,800 HP, 1,816 attack, 1,598 defense. Whereas with our current IVs, we would have 6,489 health, 1,768 attack, and 1,541 defense. Now to be fair, this Shadow Beak already does have amazing IVs, so really going for that max isn't too much of a big bonus. If we did waste our time on a low IV pal, the difference is much more noticeable. See, even if we had 10% IVs across the board and we maxed everything out, we'd only get to 5,928 HP, 1,577 attack, and 1,369 defense. At that point, it is a pretty significant difference, but it's really up to you if you want to invest the time to get those higher IVs, as well as the passive skills. Now, I really do hope this video helped all of you understand the IV system, how to be able to crossbreed to be able to pass down stats to either the same type of pal or even through crossbreeding. I do have a more in-depth video on how the breeding process works, and if you combine a good breeding process with understanding how IVs work, you'll have a really good time actually trying to make incredibly powerful pals in the game. But let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next one.